All right, well, today the name of our little blog here is going to be What's the Deal with Darkness? <laughs> so, there's different kinds of darkness. There's devil darkness. There's Jesus' use of devil darkness. And there's God's darkness. And so we're going to take a little trip through some of these scriptures and talk about it. But, you know, when you talk about darkness, you know, most people are at some time in their life were afraid of the dark, you know. And uh, whether, they, whether there was actually any real danger or not, just being in the dark, or shall I say, being not in the light where you could see what's there uh, would cause fear. And, and uh, you know, fear is a huge part of the relationship of darkness and what it, what it means and what it is. But if we're really going to understand darkness, we got to first see darkness um, in light of some of the scriptures that bring that forth. So... Uh, let's start with Luke chapter 23. And um, <clears throat> I think in light of everyone's uh, fears of darkness, um, our lack of light, um, this, these verses in uh, Luke 23 are really, really sort of amazing as we take it apart and look. Usually we read them and we only see the terrible things that happened to Jesus, so it was all darkness. And so let's look at uh, verse 44 through 48. Uh, verse 44, and it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour, and the sun was darkened. Um, and then it says in uh, verse uh, 46, and I'm skipping just a little part in that verse. And the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And verse 46, And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to that side, beholding the things which were done, smote their breasts and returned. So uh, this is not just uh, darkness. This is the whole earth is covered in darkness. And that's, that's scary. But it goes on to say that, that the sun is darkest, darkened. I mean, this thing's full of darkness, okay? Um, and in that sense, you could say that this was Earth's darkest day. Earth's darkest day. But the question is, what happened and what happens in darkness? Okay. So the first thing, it's found in verse 35, and I'll, I'll read that through um, at least through 47 again. But I'll point out, the first thing that happened in darkness was the veil was rent or torn open into the Holy of Holies. So it says, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Um, and having thus said, he gave up the ghost. So um, if you look in Hebrews chapter 10, it says this, this is uh, verses 19 through 21. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus and by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God. So one of the greatest things ever happened in the greatest darkness. It happened in it. It didn't happen and chase, you know, it, it didn't uh, chase the darkness away and make everything light. It happened 
in the darkness. And, um, and so the veil is rent, which means the way is open. That's why I went to Hebrews 10, that there is boldness now to enter in when there was no way to enter in. And, uh, and he says, through a new and living way that he consecrated for us. And um, through the veil, that is to say his flesh, having a high priest over the house of God. Okay, the second thing that I noticed in the darkness, this was happening in the darkness, the earth shook. And of course, we're going, oh no, you know, uh, my earth is being shaken in, in darkness. You know, shake it in the light, but don't shake it in the darkness because um, I'm afraid of the dark. But this, this shaking, uh, it reminded me of uh, uh, actually a scripture in the book of Acts. Um, it was in Acts 17 and verse 6, and it says this, And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. And so there, is a, there was a release when that veil was opened for us to come unto him in a new and living way. And they did it in the book of Acts. And they were they who shook the earth. Even when they received it, as it were, in darkness. And in the deepest darkness, the darkest day that there ever was. Okay, so... Um, the next one was um, that the rocks were broken during this whole thing. The rocks were broken when Jesus was crucified and when the earthquake happened and when the veil was rent. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> Matthew 27, 5 through, well, I think I've got just one verse here. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom and the rocks broke or rent. They were broken. So all the hard stuff in the darkness, not in the light. See, I think we're too afraid of the not un, because we don't understand darkness. So um, Job and Job 23 and this great verse, it says, uh, For God maketh my heart soft. And the Almighty troubleth me, because I was not cut off before the darkness. Neither hath he covered the darkness from my face. And so there is this, there is this, the, the rocks were broken, but he's talking about, Job's talking about, uh, God makes my heart soft. And I was not cut off before the darkness, even though the darkness was there. Because he made the rocks to break and he made my heart soft. And, uh, and then it said, neither hath he covered the darkness from my face. He didn't, he didn't go and hide, hide me from darkness. He did it in the midst of darkness. Okay, And then... One of the other things it said uh, in Matthew 27 was uh, the, that the graves were open. The graves were open and saints arose. All that was going on. Man, oh man, think about it. All that was going on in the darkest moment for Jesus, but it was still dark and was happening for us. And... Um, so, and the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of their graves. <laughs> so, 1 Corinthians 15, 55 through 57 says this. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, they came out of their graves. O grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
So every ounce of this is coming in Jesus's death and in darkness and, you know, and in, and in the, you know, again, it's hard for us to comprehend that the sun was darkened. It's hard for us to understand that the whole world was in darkness. And bam, in the midst of all that, this is what's going on. This is what's happening. So, um, I want to just read uh, various scriptures now that has to do with darkness. Um, this is uh, out of Matthew 10, verse 26 through 27. Fear them not, therefore, for there, this is Jesus speaking, for there's nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, <laughs> I mean, the, the main place he was speaking all this stuff from the cross was in darkness. That speak ye in light, and what you hear in the ear preach you upon the housetops. So, I mean, if nothing else, he's saying, I'm going to be speaking to you in darkness. He says, but you're going to get it, and you're going to speak it in light. Okay, well, that sounds good to me. Uh, I wrote down, these verses are a follow-up to the words of, on the cross. Here, Jesus speaks of what I tell you in darkness. What is he telling us in the darkness of the cross? That in the greatest hour of darkness... He made us a path to him. He made for us a path to him in the greatest darkness. Okay, so I wrote, stop fearing the darkness for it will bring us to the true light. Psalm 18 verse 9, he bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. Okay. Well, in other words, anything under his feet means he's the Lord of. So, I put, where's, the, where's the darkness located? It's under his feet. Psalm uh, 18, verse 11, which I was just in Psalm 18, verse 9. Psalm 18, verse 11. He made darkness his secret place, his pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies so it's a secret place it's not a it's not meant to be a scary place it's the secret of the lord is and uh and it's his place of victory all of those things start happening at his death okay and in that darkness so I, I wanted to compare that verse with Matthew 4, 16. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. So only those that sit in darkness are going to see this great light. See, we start having faith when the light comes. <laughs> but he's saying... It's all prepared in the darkness. Um, only those who sit in darkness will see the greatest of, of this, the greatness of this light, which is darkness. All right. Uh, and then uh, finally, Psalm 18, because um, that's where most of these scriptures have come from that I'm reading to you. Psalm 18. Verse 28, for thou wilt light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Okay. So the darkness shall be enlightened to be seen as darkness is. We thought the darkness would be that, that light would come and darkness would flee um, and be no more, but he says, the Lord, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. I'm being enlightened by his darkness. 
<laughs> so, and but he added to that, but my candle must be lit if I am to see my darkness, his darkness. My candle has to be lit to understand the darkness. He shall enlighten my darkness. And, and so um, there's actually um, my desire to share sometime soon again. And, and the bad thing is, is I never keep track of stuff that I say I'd like to share again or da 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 da. So if anybody ever remembers me saying that, say, hey, why don't you do that one again? But anyway, um, there's another angle also of darkness that I'd like to I'd like to share with with you because it's it's precious it's precious um, so I'm just going to go back and read the the three things that I talked about I talked about uh, the name of this is what's the deal with darkness number one there's devil darkness number two there's Jesus's use of devil darkness and and what I've shared with you from the scriptures you know would come closer to being Jesus's use of devil darkness. But then there's still three, God's darkness. His darkness was totally something that is of him. It's not of the devil. All darkness is not of the devil. Okay. So that's that. I'd like to pray with you now. And... And I'd like to ask the Holy Spirit to help us to not always assume that what we need is light to get rid of our fear of the darkness that we're in, but we need to be enlightened to this darkness. And that will take the Holy Spirit. It always does. He's faithful. He'll bring Jesus at his height, at his most self-giving right there in the midst of all that darkness and we'll be made free. That's where all the hard rocks, all the hard things are broken in us. That's where life starts coming out of its graves. That's where we start shaking the earth and all of this within that period of darkness. So let's pray. Father, just thank you so much. There is so much to you. There's so much reality in you that um, by our religious upbringing, we have uh, been taught to fear darkness, when in reality, you have a darkness that is going to bring forth the most powerful realities to us and make a path through that veil to you right there right there, starting right there in the darkness. And so we just claim we don't fully understand all angles of it, but we claim that we love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit, and that you, you can soften our heart. You can bring us in. You can bring us into things that we never could have imagined. And, and in so doing, it just turns this world upside down. And we become as those, like, like was spoken of, these are they that have turned the world upside down. We want to be that for you and by you. We do love you. And Father, for each one that's on with us today, just cover them and quicken them and bless them, Father, in, in their needs, not just their physical needs or their earthly needs, but their needs in growth in you. Water them and bless them and let them grow up in you. Father, for those that will listen to these things later, Oh, may it be like a, a cup of refreshing water to them. May it be something that strikes a chord of reality, even in whatever darkness they might be going through. 
And may you get all the glory, Jesus. And Father, may you be glorified deeply and, and in satisfaction with your Son in these things. And may the Holy Spirit have wings to be released, to constantly go and bring back proof of the, of the new creation and of, that there is life out there in the midst of the dark, ark until we are brought to Mount Ararat and we are able to depart from the ark and the dark into the gloriousness of the new creation as it is found in your son father we ask it in Jesus name amen well, thank you, folks. Love you. Keep on loving Jesus. Keep Christ in the center. Amen. Bless you guys.